analysis that was done on the 2011 census? Were there any problems with that? Well, of course, the 2011 census hasn't been done yet. But there was an impact privacy analysis done on it. Yeah, I mean, let's be clear. StatsCan does its own consultations prior to any census in a very professional way with not only Canadians who are interested in this matter, but also with the groups that are the recipients of the data. Have you done that? So in that sense, they do their job. Our job is to set the public policy for... Did you look at the impact analysis? Did you look at it? There was a privacy impact analysis done. Did you look at it? Well, we take advice from Statistics Canada as well as public servants throughout the department. So any analysis that they are done is then forwarded to us. The fact of the matter is... Mr. Angus, let the minister finish his answer, and then you can go to your next question. Yeah, the fact of the matter is, as I said from the outset, we as MPs, we as individual members of government, have also heard from Canadians who might not automatically go to another arm of the House of Commons or another arm of government in order to make their positions known, but they make it known to their MPs. And the fact of the matter is we did it on a principled basis, that we wanted to balance off the interests of those Canadians who are worried about this with the desire for more and more data. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Rota. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Minister, for being here today. Over the course of your decision-making, obviously you asked for advice. You say you consulted with Statistics Canada. The former head of Statistics Canada pointed out that you have the authority to release the written advice that was provided to you. Will you provide this committee with that advice? Well, I may have the authority, but the fact of the matter is, if it's advice to Cabinet, as you know, Mr. Rota, there would be some issues of the oath that I've taken. And so that's the challenge. It's about the information that was provided to you. Will you provide us with it? I think I can tell you again, sir. Yes or no? Simple. I'm trying to answer your question. Sometimes questions may sound simple, but the answers deserve to have some detail attached to them. And the fact of the matter is, I've said before this committee already, I've said before the public previous to this committee, that it was we who made this decision. We take full accountability and responsibility for making this decision. And then we've worked with StatsCan over the last several months to come up with options to implement. I'll take that as a no, and I'll just move on to my next question, then, if you don't mind. I've got some concerns, and if I can follow up on what Mr. Angus was talking about, about the crises that have been created. Recently, you introduced C-14, which, all in all, wasn't bad legislation, fairness at the pumps, but it's the title that came with it. It was the Chislers or the Anti-Chislers Act, I mean, to give the impression that everybody's out to get us, when in reality a very small number of people actually are cheating at the pump. There may be problems with some of the measurements, but it's a small percentage. But it made it sound like we're under attack. There's a crisis there. Now, all of a sudden, it sounds like the government's going to come to your door and throw you in jail. I mean, there's this crisis. If you don't fill out this form, you're going to jail. Now, it has flashbacks. Now, in 95, I was a city councillor in North Bay, and not long after, you were a minister in a previous government. And I've seen this show before. It's a replay of you create a crisis, get everyone upset, and all of a sudden, you've got a crowd of mad people out in the streets chasing something down that really doesn't exist. This is about being jailed. It's about the penalty. How many people have been jailed since 1971? Of course, I disagree with your characterization. Our motive is... No, no, the question is how many have been jailed since 1971. That's a simple question. Our motive is... No, no, the question is how many have been jailed. How many? Okay, let the minister finish his sentence, and if he doesn't provide us an answer, he doesn't have it. The difference between you and I is that you're willing... I didn't ask what the difference between you and I were, Mr. Minister. I asked how many people have been jailed since 1971. Let him finish his sentence. If a Canadian objects to filling out a 40-page census form, you are willing to threaten them with jail. You are willing to threaten them with fines and or jail, and we are not willing to do so. That's the fundamental difference. Thank you, Minister. Mr. Rota, go ahead. Have you considered taking the penalty away or changing the penalty? That would seem to be the logical way of looking at it, because that seems to be an option. Yeah, certainly we have considered that. The issue, though, is if you have a situation where something is mandatory but there's no sanction, 
it's a pretty much of an empty threat. We would prefer to work with Canadians to voluntarily fill out the long form, uh, to get the robust information, uh, reliable data that uh, some people require for their businesses or for their institutions. That's we think that that's a better way to go. Now, on the short term, on the short form census and the agricultural census, what is the penalty? Well. The, well, the short form census is the same penalty as before. The so you're willing to throw deputy, people in jail for not filling up a short census, the form thing. census. You're willing to throw people in jail for not filling in a short form census, but not a long form census. I, I just don't see the logic here, uh, Mr. Yeah. Minister. It just well, and, and the agricultural farmers you're willing to throw in jail, but not the people who won't throw uh, won't fill in the long form census. It just I fail to see the logic and the connection. Sure. You're 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 getting rid of something that's useful when you really should be looking at the penalty, which is... Yeah, I, I, I know you and I disagree, but for the agricultural census, obviously, I rely on the advice of the Minister of Agriculture. For the, for the short-form census, as we've said, uh, you have eight questions, or thereabouts, uh, on, a, on a form. Basic information is asked, and uh, we do require that every Canadian uh, household that uh, receives that, uh, that of, course, of course, do receive that, they fill that out. Uh, but when you, uh, our problem is not only with the, the threat of jail time, it's the intrusiveness of the questions. And I think I've made that pretty clear here. Okay, so thanks. thank you, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Rhoda. The reason I resigned, which I you know, made clear in my uh, resignation statement, was that when doubts began to be expressed about the nature of the advice that we gave, which to any statistician would come across as not the work of a statistician, I came to the conclusion that I cannot be the head of an agency whose reputation has suffered. Uh, Statistics Canada goes to endless lengths to protect uh, the confidentiality of the information it receives, and there is no single instance where uh, uh, the, the Statistics Act uh, had to be uh, used against a person because he or she released such information, knowingly or unknowingly. Um, so it's not just a question of willful release, uh, willful or inadequate uh, 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 attention uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen. Thank you, Mr. Fleggy.